Now, I'm going to just backtrack a, a little. We're going to catch up with the structural constellations pretty soon. But I just want to go back because I now want to introduce the uh, influence that Albers had uh, on Brazilian abstraction. So Albers' work had been shown in Sao Paulo as early as 39 when Flavio de Carvalho included a group of works on, on paper in the third May Salon exhibition. Uh, only one was uh, illustrated in the catalogue, and these are pages from the catalogue, but uh, there were about six works that were shown, including some of those same works that were seen in, in the earlier Mexico thing. Um, in this exhibition, as we've already heard, one of the earliest to introduce international abstract art to Brazil, Carvalho juxtaposed the abstract works of mostly European and North American artists with the prevailing trends of Brazilian modernism. And I just found the catalog absolutely fascinating because what he usually did was put a Brazilian artist, uh, which were all sort of figurative, naturalistic kind of exotic works, next to one of the European artists, uh, putting, juxtaposing these naturalistic and uh, abstract works. And again here with uh, John Theron, who's, oh, there's a work upstairs. And this was one of Albers' works uh, that was in that show. And of course, the comparison with Ligia Pape is irresistible. I do not know. Um, I don't believe they ever had any contact, but I cannot believe that she never saw this work of, of Albers. But I haven't, she is an artist that I haven't studied very much and uh, very grateful to Adele for presenting all of those woodcuts, which um, do, I think, uh, resonate at least very strongly with Albers' work of uh, 1933. Um, so although his work had been shown in Sao Paulo in 39, um, it was only in the 1950s, following Max Bill's exhibition at Maspi in Sao Paulo in 1951, and the subsequent enrollment of Brazilian artists Alexander Walner, Almia Mavignier, and Mary Vieira at the Hochschule für, für Gestaltung in Ulm, where, they're in, where they all encountered Albers as a teacher, uh, that his impact on these and other Brazilian artists was felt. One of the structural constellations was reproduced without comment in the, in the seminal Neo Concrete Manifesto published in the Journal do Brasil in March 1959, um, where it was shown alongside works by Pevsner, Max Bill, and, of course, Malevich. Um, and the neo-concrete artists here were uh, Franz Weissmann, Amilcar de Castro, Ligia, Pape, Ligia Clark, sorry, and Ligia Pape, whose work we've just seen. Um, Albers' work included there possibly as an example, or probably, um, of abstract art that transcended the rational that transcended the rational, since pure rationalism, as in the work of concrete artists, was condemned as dangerous by uh, Ferreira Goulart, who wrote the Neoconcrete Manifesto. Um, Goulart, the influential theoretician of the Neoconcretists and writer of the Manifesto, maintained in the document's polemical tone that, quote, rationalism robs art of its autonomy and substitutes the artwork's own non-transferable qualities with notions of scientific objectivity. Words that echoed Albers' earlier statement to Elaine de Kooning about science solving problems and art being about unsolvable problems. The structural constellations, um, Albers' most intense engagements with pictorial space were machine engraved onto sheets of laminated plastic backed with solid wood boards and hung directly on the wall. The accessibility of the unframed boards, their human scale, the dimensions are more or less 17 by 22 inches, um, and their naked materiality draw the viewer in and invite participation. And 
it's just, you know, showing them like this two dimension, you just don't get that feeling of uh, the tactile nature and the really uh, material qualities because they are reliefs, reliefs. The white lines are incised into the plastic and even when they are minimally incised, they have a real sense of, um, of space. Uh, in this example, the configuration described within the finely drawn tilted rectangles reads as a series of folded overlapping transparent planes. So if you sort of think of the area between the thick lines as being solid but see, able to be seen through, one gets the sense of uh, a, a series of folded planes that are activated as spatially penetrating surfaces by the viewer. In a way analogous to Alves' own shock of recognition when he encountered Mesoamerican art, Ligia Clark, Elio Oitasika, and Ligia Pape, three of the artist's signatories to the Neoconcrete Manifesto, discovered in Alves an avatar of their own preoccupations. Ligia Clark communicated with Albers and exchanged books and catalogues via Luis Dalmeida Cunha, a Brazilian diplomat in the USA. Um, a compulsive writer and diarist, she wrote in her journal of her dissatisfaction with concrete painting, which she decided lacked vigor. She wrote, um, it seems as if the artist is afraid to violate the canvas and paints in a precious manner like a woman doing needlepoint. Clark, on the other hand, saw in the canvas the meaning of life, a site of contest and struggle from which something profound, vital, and organic may be produced. Reading this, I'm reminded of Annie Albers' advice to artists to engage with their materials. And Annie wrote, the more possibilities for attack the material offers, the more it can call forth imagination and productiveness. Another of Clark's expressed goals at this time was the necessity, again a quote, was, quote, the necessity of making the external space participate in the internal compositions of a surface, end of quote, a quality that she had detected in Albers' work. Under a heading, Albers' influences in her journals, and almost certainly with his structural constellations in mind, she continued with great insight. Observing the findings of Albers, I, feel, I felt the immense possibility arising from him in his graphic series, in which he expressed multidimensional space in the form of solids spilling outwards graphically. Very insightful. If, as is likely, Clark had seen Albers' structural constellations in reproduction only at this time, she may not have realized that in them, Albers had abandoned the frame, something that she was struggling to do in her own work. 